Legends, what's going on? The War Within Alpha has finally kicked off with a recent two day press event having just concluded. Now, I was invited along with some other fabulous creators to experience a little sneak peek of what is in store for us in the War Within. Now, the zone that we got to explore and quest through was the Isle of Dawn, and this is set in Kazalgar, which is between Kalimdor and Pandaria. Here we find an isolated group of earthen dwarves, and this is very much shaping up to be the dwarf expansion because these are also our next allied race. We got to progress through the first four parts of this story in the Isle of Dawn for the War Within, and this sets up the conflict between the Council of Dornagal and the Nerubian Empire. Now there are three other zones waiting for us to explore that we haven't yet seen, and will likely be rolled out in builds in alpha. The other three zones are the Ringing Deeps, and this is a mine-like industry style zone set up for the dwarves. Hallowfall, which is an underground zone, and the team really stated in the Q&A that we had access to that they have worked extremely hard around creating this space to not feel like you're in an enclosed cave. They used the word they wanted to avoid cavern fatigue, like we saw in Zellerec Caverns where it was really obvious that you were in a small enclosed cave space and it didn't feel like there was a lot of room. Hallowfall from the images and the video we've seen is massive. You wouldn't even know that you are in a cave-like system and there are underground airships just to go along with that vibe. The Nerubian Empire is the final zone that we haven't had access to and this is the height of the spider people's civilization. This zone looks absolutely incredible from the short imagery and videos that we've seen. This is going to be where the first raid of the expansion takes place as well, and we got a sneak peek at one of the boss models in there, and it looks absolutely fantastic. The main city hub for the zone is Dornagol, which is set with the Foundation Hall as its centerpiece. Now this is going to be the main central hub for players in the War Within. And I get Ironforge goes outside vibes from this. It's reverse mine. It's outside mine. It's extremely themed towards the Earthen Dwarves, as you would expect. And the layout is very spread out with a lot of untouched growth surrounding and growing on things. The sound of forge hammers going off and stone structures jutting out of hills and rock faces. It's really cool and it's very pretty. My initial impression when I first got there was that it was really actually quite small. I flew into that central channel in the tower where the portals are. I looked around and I was kind of like, is this it? But then as I started to branch out and try and find things like the trading post and professions and things like that, it actually spans a lot of ground and it is a large city hub, very alike to Valdraken that we're currently used to at the moment. So I think this is actually gonna be a really cool hub once it's alive and kicking. The Isle of Dawn, based on first impressions for me, didn't really thrill me to the bone if I'm being honest. There are some absolutely gorgeous sections of the Isle without a doubt. There's also just a lot of open space and once you go and have that moment of... <sighs> How's the serenity? You kind of get over it. Don't get me wrong, it has grown on me a lot since multiple sort of carries through the zone. But it has that real Arathi Highlands vibe of vast rolling hills, lots of rocks and lots of grass. And that is for some people, I just didn't really wow me. There are certainly those standout points in the zone which I mentioned, like Dornagol in that main city. The bl this blue crystal lightning rock area that I came across was really cool. This spring in the middle of nowhere was also really cool. Uh, the Cinderbrew Meadery, which is the second dungeon in this zone, has a gorgeous entrance area, and the zone certainly fits its theme for what it's setting up for. It just didn't really rock my world for whatever reason on that initial visit. I really enjoyed the story through the zone, the questing. It has the same kind of quests that we're always used to in regards to collect this, kill 10 of that, extra action button quests. Honestly, the questing was really smooth, felt really good, pacing was really nice. 
I love how they weave things like delves into the story arc as you were going through the zone. The dungeons are also weaved into the storyline, which is pretty common now, but I enjoy that as well. They did a really good job around the questing, the story and the pacing for this, and I'm certainly looking forward to getting into the other three zones that we haven't seen yet. Moving away from the zone aesthetics as such, there are two dungeons located on the Isle of Dawn, the Rookery and Cinderbrew Meadery. Now I've had the chance to do both of them. The Rookery is the place where the Storm Griffins are raised and trained, and it's a pretty cool dungeon. Multi-levels, some really cool looking mobs in here, some really cool looking boss models as well, and some boss fights. It's multi-level dungeon, as I said, where you drop down, you've got the use of extra action buttons through it as well. I don't want to spoil the dungeon for you, but it does look really cool, and it was definitely my favorite out of the two. Cinderbrew Meadery gave me instant MOP Storm Stout Brewery vibes when I zoned into it, and then as I started progressing through it, I actually got Blackrock Foundry vibes mixed with some Blackrock Depths. Again, cool dungeon, very inside dungeon. Um, you really feel like you are kind of not in a box when you're playing it. The Rookery felt very spaced out and very open. Cinderbrew felt really quite closed and tight. Uh, there are some cool bees in there. And again, it's not a bad dungeon, but the Rookery kind of won over as the better one in my opinion. Other big highlights in the zone, which are going to happen really quickly when you start off for your adventure, is you're going to come into Illyria Windrunner and one with their new models. You'll encounter Jaina, Thrall, and Magni really early on in the story, and then again throughout the quest, which I think is a really good setup to that wow factor as soon as you start going. You'll encounter Delves, which I mentioned in passing before, and they're introduced to you via a quest chain through the Isle of Dawn, and these are the new instant-style content from Blizzard, and I've actually made another video all about them if you want to check that out on the channel. We've been advised that new builds are going to be coming weekly to alpha, and there is a real desire to take on player feedback and improve each build and work on that until they get to that beta stage where they're going to reset everything and then test it with a mass of new players with all of that feedback put in place. So they are really taking this seriously from the Q&A that we had, and they really do want to act off player feedback. Some of the smaller features that have made an impact to the game include the arachnophobia filter. Now this turns spiders into crabs. You can toggle this on and off, and even if you're in combat, it'll alter the appearance in and out as you toggle it. Now this is a huge win for people that take issues with spiders, even though it's easy to think of them as just kind of hands with eyes. Nothing creepy about that. We got new water in game. That is right, we got new water this actually looks so good moving through the water you can see the difference at what they've been able to do here and i love being able to draw attention to this this is something that came up in the q a when they were talking about things that they've done to the engine that allow them to do different things in game and they were so proud of the water and it's right we have really cool water in world of warcraft now and lastly we got our first look at the war within collector's edition and it does not disappoint you can see there's an amazing new statue which we got to see on a video. It's got that, uh, it's going to be made of the same stuff the Ragnaros anniversary statue was made out of. It looks really good. It's pretty massive. The artwork, the box is going to be absolutely spectacular. And there's like a medal or a pin, I'm not too sure. But again, it's going to be a collector's edition that any collector is going to want to grab and it's going to look amazing. So that's it for the moment regarding my highlights out of the two days that I got to explore through the zone. I just wanted to try and keep it somewhat brief. I didn't want to put too many spoilers in there for you guys as I know you want to go and enjoy it yourself. But I'm really pumped for The World Within. I hope you are too. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know any questions you've got. I'll see you all next time.